Hi, I'm Daniel Pulisic. I'm with VMware's Cloud Provider Program. I'm here today to talk a little bit more about the Cloud Director and what I like to call about bringing it all together. We have this concept called uh, the Cloud Provider Platform. And what I'm gonna convey today is how all of these pieces and parts work together to really uh, focus on one single goal, provide services to an end user. So let's start off at the most basic building block, vCloud Director. VCD is backed by provider VDCs, which in essence are vCenters. So we have our vSphere objects, our storage objects, and then our virtual network services. This scales out as we need additional resources and continues to grow and mount up directly to the VCD environment. VCD then, in turn, creates organizations. So let's say in my example here, we have T1, which is tenant one. We create our organization context, and then inside of the organization, we create OVDCs, or organization VDCs, which is a pool of CPU, memory, storage, and network resources. From here, then the end user can log in securely through a UI or API and consume those resources. In the past 18 to 24 months, VCD has rapidly evolved and really changed to this true services platform. So one of the most recent additions is the ability to do dedicated vCenters, or what I like to call dedicated private cloud, through a secure UI functionality, along with the API access. This is what we call central point of management or CPOM, where I can expose a dedicated SDDC stack or a dedicated vCenter to a U end user and proxy that access securely through the VCD front end cells. From there, let's talk about what does it take to run an entire cloud provider platform. In the back end, we have to man uh, monitor and manage this. To do this, we have to use tools like Virilize Operations. VROPS is a very important and critical tool uh, for two reasons. One, it gives us that end-to-end -end insight into the overall virtualized environment along with the underlying hardware and be able to stitch together a message that says, how is my infrastructure operating? What can I actually do to further optimize that? And is there anything that I should be watching out for that could be coming in my potentially near future? Moreover, recently, we've introduced a VROPS tenant app for vCloud Director. This tenant app allows the end user to expose, to see their organization, and have the ability to manage and monitor their end applications inside of their organization. Moreover, we also have chargeback built into VROPS. So now we can set, as the provider, pricing policies inside of VROPS that now are exposed to the end user and access those resources. From there, we also have log aggregation, which is VRLI's Log Insight. And we also have VRLI's Network Insight for full end-to-end -end visibility to the overall network and having that as a great provider tool to manage and monitor what is going on from the overlay and the data center fabric. Now, what about tools that we have to integrate inside of my current provider operational process? Well, that's where we bring in VRI's Orchestrator. VRI's Orchestrator is an extremely powerful engine that allows us to really do X as, a any, as anything or X as a service. And what this allows us to do is if we have to go integrate into my third party ITSM system, make a call out to a custom application on that, I can create a workflow inside of VRO that calls onto this third-party application or builds an interesting workflow that allows this process to happen. This is something that the provider can use or we can expose this as an option for the tenant to consume on a per organization basis. This is a concept inside of the service catalog. So some of the interesting things some of my peers have done is 
uh, automated the provisioning of containers or brought up an entire organization inside of vCloud Director without going through the manual steps. So if I'm a provider and I need to bring on a new tenant, I got to create an organization, an org edge, expose VLANs or whatever that trunk is, create the org VDC networks, assign permissions. Well, what if I can automate all that through a simple VRO workflow? that's then provisioned and presented to the UI, and all it asks for is the name. VRO is doing all that work for us. So from here, you know what we can see and recently has been exposed is also, I mentioned containers. So containers is an interesting concept where we see a lot of initial adoption and growth, uh, especially with our cloud providers and tenants. We have something called the CSE or Container Services Extension. CSE allows us to use the API and expose containers in a native form. Recently with 2.0, we now work with PKS. So PKS can be backed by a provider VDC, exposed to a tenant, and the tenant can then consume PKS services directly from the Cloud Director. Next up, we have vCloud availability. So vCloud availability, and you probably have heard of me talk about this in the past, is the ability to do migrations and DR as a service uh, from a self-service perspective from the tenant or provider. So if I'm the tenant and I have my on-prem da data center over here, and let's say I need to retire this infrastructure and move out of this data center, or I want a hybrid model, uh, which I want to have part of my workloads running over into my on-prem data center and work with my provider on consuming some of those cloud resources. Well, with a single appliance deployment, I can securely connect. We have a tunnel mechanism that uses port 443 outbound. And then we have a plugin that sits inside of the vCAV environment, or excuse me, vCenter environment. And from here, I can set workflows that provide migration and DR as a service. And this could be DR to the cloud, or we can also have DR from the cloud to the on-prem environment. So this is another offering that we could put inside of vCloud Director. And what about, you know, we talk about migration and DR uh, functionality, but what about long-term backup and retention and the ability to set SLA policies and backup uh, to a solution. Well, that's where we work with uh, many different ecosystem partners, but let's talk about EMC's data protection services. So data protection services is also part of the VCPP platform, and this directly integrates into vCloud Director. From VCD integration, there's a plugin that's available the end tenant or organization admin can then assign policies for the users to consume and then adhere to whatever is set through uh, vCloud Director. Now we've been focusing on a single site. This is a single vCloud Director site. Let's talk about multi-site uh, functionality and what we actually bring to the table when we look at different availability zones. Let's say this is my Atlanta site, this is my Charlotte site. Well, within inside of vCloud Director, we introduce the concept of federation association. So what we can do, initially the provider establishes a level of trust between the VCD instances, and then the tenant associates their organization and provides a pairing between the two sites. From here, the organization admin or any user that's authenticated, that has permissions, can log in to either site, either the Charlotte site or my Atlanta site, and access all the network services or virtual services from either site. So having that single pane of glass. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. We have something called cross VDC networking or site networking services. This allows us to utilize cross vCenter NSX inside of NSX V, the ability to stretch a layer two network 
between one or many org VDCs or one or many different VCD instances. So depending on your application use case, this can be quite valuable and can be managed on a per tenant basis. The tenant can manage this and create this and also manage what my egress points are. So if I wanna set active-passive, active-active, that is all fully controlled through the API. So adding this as a function, multi-site, and then what I call CVDC networking, we get to see a picture of all the services available today inside of vCloud Director. And there's a lot more coming. If you need any more information, please go to vcpp.cloud or reach out to your cloud provider team or your aggregator. Thanks and have a great day.